Oh, do you want me to turn off the light? Because I feel like it's harder to see the document camera with the light off. And it's blurry. I can tell it. The nice thing about this as well is that I can see them when I'm doing the notes. So I don't have my back to them on the board. And also, um, if they need me to go back to something, I can move it around. Whereas if it's on my board and I erase it, then it's gone. So that's why I've invested in one of these. All right, sorry, I'm just going to get to focus. When it decides to focus, do you need my hand? There we go. All right, cool. Am I recording? That's the other thing. Yes, I am. All right, let's talk redox and what we're doing for this standard. So, we ready? No time? Okay. So, let's talk about redox and what we're doing for this assessment. So with the Redox, uh, this one is worth three credits. Do I need to fix my document camera? Uh, it's worth three credits. It is an internal. And this internal, you guys will be sitting like a test. Um, kind of like spec. Are you going to keep doing that? I'm going to die. If you guys are looking up the assessment number, it's 91393, I believe, off the top of my head. Um, with this Redox, it's taking the stuff that you guys learned last year in level two, but now we're starting to look at how do we take those Redox reactions and manipulate them for practical purposes. So that's what I would extend this onto. So manipulating, um, uh, Redox reactions for practical purposes. Now, when we're talking about practical purposes, this basically breaks off into two categories. The first category, and this is what we're doing with vocab de detective, the first um, ca um, category is going to be stuff related to batteries and how batteries work. Um, batteries are referred to as electrochemical. Um, you might also hear them being referred to as um, galvanic cells. Um, or voltic cells. Just FYI when you come across it. Um, so this is obviously a really useful source and something that we do want to manipulate because it allows us to generate energy. And in fact, batteries are really, really old. We've had batteries for a very long time. Um, I won't tell you when because that's going to be one of my questions for you later. Uh, the other type of um, reaction we're looking at is electrolytic. Um, the lytic component is a very useful word hint. Uh, it's talking about breaking things up uh, and electro using electricity to do it. Um, so the main kind of examples we're going to be looking at is purifying elements. And the other thing would be uh, plating, which is useful. We're good with that so far. So that's what we're looking at for this internal. Unfortunately, our internals are not worth more than three. Um, and that's with all of them. All right, keep going. All right, shift it. We'll still be on the page, don't worry. All right, so let's first look at the vocab for redox. So when we talk about redox, let's break down the word. So there's two components that we're thinking about with a redox reaction. The first one is our reduction reaction. And then the ox is referring to the oxidation reaction. So they are two half reactions. We need to have both of them because we cannot create or destroy matter. So you're always going to have them in a pair. If you're writing up any answer and you only have or if you're writing up an answer and you have two oxidation reactions, or you have two reduction reactions, you've done something wrong. You should have one of each. Um, there's lots of different ways that we define redox reaction. The older definitions tie back to how we understood chemistry. 
And one of the first ways we understood chemistry was looking at oxygen and if oxygen was being added or removed from molecules. So what they used to do back in the day is they would weigh something, there'd be a chemical reaction that happened and they'll weigh it again and that weight would change and they realized that that change in weight had to do with the mass of oxygen. So that was where our first definition came from. So when with reduction, uh, these reactions were the ones that lost uh, oxygen or lose oxygen. And stuff that got oxidized were things that gained oxygen. So that was the old definition. Uh, you can still use it, but we've expanded that definition to mean more things. So that's the first one. Um, the next kind of pattern that they noticed when it came to chemical reactions is the gain or loss of hydrogen. So with reduction, that is an example of when you gain hydrogen. And with um, oxidation, that's when you lose hydrogen. And that was something that people could obviously easily observe in chemical reactions because you can look at how the mass is changing and if it's changing by a factor of hydrogen or a factor of oxygen. Obviously, our reactions are not limited to just stuff that has oxygen and has hydrogen. And that's when we started introducing in electrons and understanding how electrons are being gained and lost in chemical reactions. So that's the definition that we use uh, more so when we're talking about redox and what you guys are going to be looking at as kind of what we're highlighting. So with reduction, we know that that one is a gain of electrons, a gain of electron. Um, and then with oxidation, it is a loss of electrons. And I'm going to put parentheses because sometimes there's multiple. And this is the main one that we're going to focus on. And the main one you guys should have been focusing on last year. Does this ring a bell to people so far? Hopefully head nodding yes. All right. Uh, do you guys remember the acronyms you had to help you remember which one was which? Um, no. <laughs> okay. Oil rig is one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Oil rig, if you want to support uh, climate change. <laughs> so that one is the um, oxidation is loss of electrons. Uh, reduction is gain of electrons. Personally, I don't like oil rig for some reason. I like Leo the Lion's is Gur. Leo says Gur is my one. Um, you don't have to use that one. You can use either or. But the main thing I want you guys to remember is that gaining electrons is reduction. Loss of electrons is um, oxidation. I should say lose. So loss, electrons, oxidation, gain, electrons, reduction. Does this ring a bell to you guys? Hopefully. There's a head saying no, which is concerning. All right. Do you guys need me to slow down, clarify? Or shall I keep going? Okay. We're good? Ready for some more words? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what I will do is I'm going to write down some equations and we're going to apply this information just to kind of refresh our words. Um, so let's draw two of them down. Uh, I don't know if this purple is a good purple, so let me get an orange instead. All right. So let's say I was adding, or sorry, let's say we're looking at magnesium, Mg, and I have a half equation going on, and I see that Mg the metal is becoming Mg the ion, which you guys have seen quite a bit because we've been adding magnesium into acid, and then it has the two electrons on the side. So that's an example of a half equation. So things I'm looking for to help me figure out if this is oxidation or reduction is first off, I have to look to see where the electrons are. Are they on the reactant side or are they on the product side? In this case, I notice they're on the product side, so that tells me that those electrons have been lost from that magnesium. So this here is a loss of electrons. Um, so what this tells me is that this reaction is an oxidation reaction. Are we good so far? All right. When I'm looking at this reaction with my magnesium, I see that magnesium has gone from the element to the ion. And so I would refer to that as uh, magnesium was oxidized or is oxidized. Does 
So that's the terminology that we're looking at for that. If I was looking at another equation, because we have to remember, like I said, these redox reactions need to happen in pairs. I can't create or destroy matter. So in this case, I removed two electrons, so those electrons need to go somewhere. The example I'm going to use is chlorine. So let's say I have chlorine gas. Um, it gains two electrons, and it forms the chloride ion. Let me balance those equations. So what I am again looking for is I'm trying to see where my electrons are. On their, are they on the reactant side? Are they on the product side? And here I can see that they're on the reactant side, and so my chlorine has gained them. So this is gaining of electrons. So since that's a gain of electrons, that tells me that this is the reduction reaction. And you should always have one of each. The easiest way to look is to see where your electrons are. If I was talking about what's happening, I would say that chlorine was reduced. Is everybody happy with that vocabulary so far? Okay. You ready for me to throw a spanner into the works and have you guys be unhappy for a second? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Do you guys remember the terms oxidant and reductant and how confusing they were because they were not the way you would think they would be? Yeah. All right. So we would say magnesium is a reductant. And we would say chlorine is an oxidant. And I'm sorry that the words don't make sense, but it does actually make sense when you think about what, why they've gotten those names. So the thing you have to remember is the word oxidant and reductant are referring to what it's doing to the other half of the equation. So since magnesium, uh, is providing the electrons for the chlorine and the chlorine is getting reduced from that, we refer to that as being the reductant. Since uh, chlorine is receiving those electrons from the magnesium, then that is oxidizing the magnesium, thus called the um, oxidant. The other way you might hear it being referred to is reducing agent and oxidizing agent. Um, and basically what we're trying to understand is that these electrons here are going over here. Are you okay with that so far? Mm -hmm. All right, questions, concerns, comments? Do you need another example? Are you guys ready to play a game? Yeah. The fly swatter game, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. How confident you guys are feeling with that um, vocab? <laughs> How confident are you feeling with that vocab? Yeah. How confident do you feel with that vocab? Oh. Oh. I thought that all right. about throwback. Throwback, oh no. Okay. All right, we're going to switch. All right. So, um, like I said, oxidation number is a really useful tool for us when we have equations and we can't track the electrons as a way to figure out which is oxidation and reduction. Um, be mindful of what you're checking for is if my um, oxidation number increases, uh, it goes up. That is referring to, uh, or that's showing a loss of electrons. So therefore, that is my oxidation. Um, so what you're going to be doing is comparing and contrasting the oxidation numbers in an equation to see how it's changed. If my oxidation number goes down, then I have gained electrons, and therefore I have a reduction reaction. If my oxidation number does not change for that element, what that tells me then is that it's not involved in the redox process. Are we good so far? All right, so most things you'll be able to figure out based off of the list. If you can't figure it out based off the list, you're going to need to do something called oxidation math is what I like to refer to it. So I'll do a couple of examples just to show you guys using the list and also the oxidation math. Let's say, for example, I have sulfuric acid. H2SO4. And I'm trying to figure out the oxidation number of each element in that formula. So there's several different rules I can use. 
Uh, first thing is thinking about hydrogen. So this is the hydrogen ion. So that tells me that that must be positive one. So if I want the oxidation number of hydrogen, that's positive one in this case. Keep in mind some things when you're writing and talking about oxidation numbers. Even though there's two hydrogens there, we are referring to each hydrogen. So each hydrogen has a oxidation number of positive one. Um, the other thing you should be noting is the annotations and how we write things. When we're writing charge, we write the charge um, behind the numbers. Whereas when we're talking about oxidation numbers, we write the charge in front. It's just, again, coming back to that chemistry language to then help people communicate across, am I talking about charge or am I talking about oxidation numbers? Um, so that one fits my rules. That one's fine. Sulfur is one I'm going to have to use oxidation math for, so I'll do that one last. The next one on there is oxygen. Again, I see that oxygen's in a compound, but it's not in a compound that's hydrogen peroxide, so I know it must be minus two. So each oxygen on its own is minus two. Um, the other thing I know is that the overall molecule is zero. So from that information, I can figure out sulfur, and we're basically just going to be doing algebra to figure out sulfur. So let's set up the equation. I have two hydrogens. I have one sulfur, and I have four oxygens. I'm going to write oxygen as OX, so that way it doesn't look like 40. And all those oxidation numbers are what's going to then equal the oxidation number of my uh, sulfuric acid. So what I can do is I can start plugging in my numbers. So hydrogen I know is positive 1, so I have 2 times 1. I have my unknown, X, which is sulfur. Uh, for oxygen, I have four of them, and I know its oxidation number is negative two. And then I set it equal to zero because overall molecules are zero. Are you okay with that so far? All right, then I just keep doing some math. So I have two plus x plus negative um, eight equals zero. And then when I keep doing this equation, x equals positive six. So sulfur's oxidation number is positive 6. And that's what I call oxidation math. That's it. Just remember this? Do you guys want another example? Do you want another example? We're just ringing a bell. One more? Or should I show you guys like something that's an exception to the rule so you know what to do if there's exceptions? It shouldn't come up, but if it does, I want to show you what to do. All right. Um, sometimes when you do oxidation math, you're going to get a um, non-whole number. Your answer should never be a non-whole number because you can't have a fraction of an electron. So this is one example. So let's say I have S4O6 and it's set to minus 2 for that polyatomic ion. Again, I don't know sulfur. Sulfur can have a large variety of oxidation numbers. Um, I do know oxygen because it follows the rules, and I do know the charge of the overall molecule. So if I was to do this and translate into equation, I have four sulfurs plus six oxygens equals my polyatomic ion. And if I was to plug in my oxidation numbers that I know, I have four x because my x is my unknown. I have six times negative two, and I have it equal to negative two. Do you see how what I'm saying with the language? If I'm talking about charge, the charge is behind the number, whereas if I'm talking about oxidation number, the charge is in front. Now, if I do the math here, I have 4x um, plus negative 12 equals negative 2. And then when I do the math, I have 4x equals um, positive 10. And then if I divide by 4, you're going to realize you're not going to get a full number. You're going to get 2.5. Yeah. x equals 2.5 which you can't have as an oxidation number because you can't have a fraction of an electron so what this tells me is that the sulfurs in that polyatomic ion have different oxidation numbers and it's any variety of oxidation numbers that can equal 10 so for example my first sulfur could have an oxidation number of uh, positive 6 
My second sulfur could have an oxidation number of positive two. My third one could also have positive two. And then my fourth one could be zero. And that adds up to 10. So that's what's happening whenever you see something uh, that doesn't have a full number, is that it just has multiple oxidative numbers. And it could be anything, really. It just depends on what's happening with that reaction, oh, how many electrons you need to transfer. Are we OK with that? All right, I'm just mindful of the time. Um, what I will do, because I know we have eight minutes left, is I'll put some questions on the board um, that you guys can use as practice. The homework is on Google Classroom if you want to do the homework. Uh, it's just practicing oxidation numbers, and I'll pass out the um, exam question for this fortnight. Cool?